Number 34. In softball, the pitcher throws with the arm fully extended, straight at the elbow. In a fast pitch, the ball leaves the hand with a speed of 139 kilometers per hour. Letter A. Find the rotational kinetic energy of the pitcher's arm, given its moment of inertia is 0.72 kilogram meter squared, and the ball leaves the hand at a distance of 0.6 meters from the pivot at the shoulder. All right. Uh, so here's our little diagram. Um, I realize it's uh, softball, but I decided to apparently draw this as if it's baseball. It really does not matter at all. Um, it's going to be the same calculations regardless. Um, but this probably should have come down below. Eh, what are you going to do? Anyway, so the uh, ball here is going to be, or, or the arm is represented by this uh, line, and it is 0.6 meters in length. It's going to be rotating about the axis of the shoulder, okay? And that is then going to cause this rotational velocity or the angular velocity. And uh, what they also tell us is that the ball will leave the hand at the top here with a velocity of 139 kilometers per hour, right? I mean, first thing I realize is that uh, these units I don't really like, right? We'd like to convert them into meters per second. So we can do that. Um, I'm going to write the work at the top here. So this is 139 kilometers kilometers per hour. To get rid of kilometers, they go on the bottom, meter on the top, thousand meters for every kilometer. Bada bing, bada boom, take care of kilometers, see you later. And we got hours on the top, we can convert right to seconds because for every hour, there's 3,600 seconds, okay? And then this would give our, our answer. So what do we get about, get a, so it's 139 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, and it's about 38.6, okay? So 38.6. And that's going to be radians, oh no, excuse me, meters, uh, meters per second, not radians. Yet. Okay, so uh, now that that's out of the way, so we do know this particular value is going to be 38.6 meters per second. That's equivalent. Now, uh, what we need to do is find the rotation. It's very important how they define it. Find the rotational kinetic energy. So I'm thinking about this formula over here on the right-hand side. And it's very important to know the rotate what we're finding the rotational kinetic energy of. And it says, find the rotational kinetic energy of the pitcher's arm. And that is it. Okay? So, to find this, simply let's write out the formula kinetic energy of rotation of the pitcher's arm should equal one half multiplied by the moment of inertia for the pitcher's arm, okay, just the pitcher's arm, then multiplied by the angular velocity of the pitcher's arm squared. Okay, so now this being the case, right, we do know I, they told it to us, 0.7, that's 0.72 I mean, that's pretty simple. How do we then get uh, the angular velocity if we just know the tangential velocity? You have to remember the formula over here, right? I'm going to write it down. Vt is equal to r omega. And we realize that solving for um, omega here, we can come up then with the formula that omega is equal to Vt over r. Okay, so essentially we're going to take this value and substitute it on in for the omega. So now this becomes kinetic energy of rotation will equal of the arm, that is, one half times the moment of inertia of the arm, multiplied by then the tangential velocity divided by the radius squared. And now we know everything. So this is pretty easy. It's going to be one half multiplied then by 0.72 and then multiplied by the 38.6, I think it's like 111, divided by uh, the radius of 0.6 and that whole thing is squared. So what do we get here? Kinetic energy of rotation for just the arm is going to be 0.5 times 0.72 times then that value, oops, one second, let me just put in parentheses, that value divided by 0.6, and that whole thing is squared. So we get an answer here of 1.49, it looks like, times 10 to the third. Okay, and that will be in terms of joules. So that's the kinetic energy of rotation of just the um, pitcher's arm. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. Now letter B, let me write some of the work. I'm going to write it uh, maybe down here. I'll start writing it. I'm just going to work across the page. So now part B. It says, what force did the muscles exert to cause the arm to rotate if their effective perpendicular lever arm is 4 centimeters and the ball is 0.156 kilograms? All right. 
So there's a couple of ways to now include um, this particular information, all right? So we're, we are looking for force, okay? And we have to realize that this is a rotational problem. And therefore, and they're also telling us, right, perpendicular lever arms. So I'm thinking to myself that in order to find the force, I really need to find the torque, all right? If I can find the total torque, uh, then I am able to divide out the perpendicular lever arm. It has to be in meters though, right? And I can find the force. So my thought process is, well, okay, um, I need to have some, I, I need to look at some formulas that involve torque and I see that I have two here, right? The better one to use in this particular problem is the rotational work uh, one. The reason why is because the torques change as the, as the arm rotates, the lever arm, uh, the perpendicular lever arm and compared to the weight of the arm will uh, move and therefore that's constantly changing. So it's a little easier to look at this in terms of rotational work. Okay, it should equal then the uh, net torque multiplied then by the um, angular displacement. Now, we have, to make an, uh, we have to make an assumption here. Okay, the assumption is that, and how do we know we have to make an assumption? Well, just uh, if we don't, we cannot solve it. All right, uh, in terms of a definitive number. I can't, I can't give you a definitive number. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to make the assumption that the angular displacement here that the arm will make will be uh, one quarter of a full rotation, okay? One quarter. So meaning if I were to, I know in terms of my diagram, I'm just turning this problem into a, into a baseball problem, okay? But let's say here is, the, here is the shoulder. Here I just drew the arm, okay? And now it's going to go from this position at the start and rotate on up to here, and then that's when the ball will be released. Okay, just kind of like a pitching motion. So it starts here, ends there, all right? So that would be a quarter of a full circle, right? And if that's a quarter of a full circle in terms of radians, how many radians is that? Well, it's pi over two radians, okay? There's two pi in a full rotation, and therefore a quarter of it would be pi over two. So I know this to be pi over two, all right? So I, I do need to assume this particular value. If you change this value, um, obviously your answer will change. So um, I think the most reasonable assumption though is a quarter of a circle that it's gonna make. Now, this being the case, I know I need to solve this for uh, the torque, okay? So the torque will simply be equal to the rotational work done divided by theta. Now, you have to be very careful. You cannot take this value and just substitute it on in here. Why? Because you found the kinetic energy the rotational kinetic energy of just the arm. Now the pitcher is holding a ball. So we also will be imparting an energy now to the ball that this calculation does not take into account. Okay, so that's how these two parts are different. So there's a couple of ways to do this, which is kind of interesting. So what you can do, the easiest way I think, is to um, basically, here's the kinetic energy of rotation of the arm. Okay, and now what, we're, now what we can do is we can then take the kinetic energy that the ball attains at the end of its motion and add that then to the kinetic energy of rotation, okay, that the arm experienced. Basically, in other words, the, basically what I'm saying is that the total work done, right, of the rotating system will equal the kinetic energy imparted of the arm that's rotating plus the kinetic energy now that the ball obtains at the end of its motion, okay? And uh, just keep this in mind, okay? So now the kinetic energy that the ball obtains at the end of its motion is simply the uh, translational kinetic energy, right? We know the, they told us the speed at which the ball will be released. So basically this will now work out to be, uh, so in terms of my formula over here, I'm just now going to write equal to, so this is gonna be kinetic energy of rotation plus the kinetic energy, the translational kinetic energy that the ball obtains, all divided by my theta, okay? I know this value, right, it's just this whole mumbo jumbo, so I know I can plug that all in. And I now need to expand on the kinetic energy that the ball obtains, the translational kinetic energy, right? So that would be one half mv squared. So why don't we look at it this way? So this would be one half, I'm going to just Use, do this in terms of formulas. So it's one half multiplied then by the moment of inertia um, of the arm multiplied then by the angular velocity of the arm squared. 
That's exactly what we calculated up here. Okay. Um, plus now, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I want to show you something at the end of this, I think. Um, instead of writing, which is true, the, omega, the um, angular velocity squared, I'm going to instead substitute this on in. Okay. It's VT over R. So here, this is going to be VT over R squared. Okay. Plus now, the one half, this is now the mass of the ball, right? Multiplied by the tangential velocity of the ball squared, right? That's the translational energy. And this is now all divided by my theta that I assumed to be a quarter of a circle. Now, all we need to do is really just plug this on in, okay? And it, well, first, right, if we plug this on in, we will then solve for the net torque, okay? And from here, then, what I'm going to do is expand. I can expand on the torque. So I know this equation is getting a little long, but I'm just thinking about saving some space. So that remember, this torque is equal to the force applied multiplied by that perpendicular lever arm. Okay, so this will be the force. This will represent the force of the muscle. And this one will represent the perpendicular lever arm of that force. Okay, now remember, we know this. Okay, we don't know this. This is what we're after. But if I know this and I know this whole mumbo jumbo, then I can solve for the force, right? So essentially this, this problem now just works out to be, I mean, I can combine variables here if I wanted, right? The common halves and all that stuff. I'm just going to leave it separate for now. So this would be then, the final formula here would be, this will equal one, uh, excuse me, one half I A V T over R squared plus one half M B V T squared, all now divided by uh, R perpendicular times the theta. And this whole thing now is equal to the force. Okay, so this is the, this is the formula you need. Now, we can just plug everything in. Since I'm running out of space, uh, I'm just going to leave it like this for a second. Now watch, now I want you to notice something, um, I think kind of interesting. So let's say, let's say you were having trouble and thinking to yourself, well, how do I know for this, for this kinetic energy, I'm using the translational one, right? How do I know it shouldn't be the rotational one? How do I know, how do I know that I shouldn't look at the whole system? Um, sorry. How do I know I shouldn't look at the whole system here as a rotating system and take the ball into account in terms of its rotational kinetic energy? Well, let me show you. You can, all right? And it's actually going to be equivalent. So let's say now you're going to take this system into account that there's two things that are rotating in this system. You have the arm that's rotating and you have the ball out here that's also rotating, okay? So there's two objects rotating about an axis. That being the case, we know then that if I use this formula, kinetic energy of rotation for the total system will equal one half multiplied by the moment of inertia of the total system, okay, multiply then by the, by the angular uh, velocity of that system squared. Now what we notice here is that, remember I said that there's two systems, so therefore there's two moments of inertia, okay? So I can say this kinetic energy R is gonna be equal to one half times I one, let's call this instead of one, let's call this the moment of inertia of the arm plus then the moment of inertia of the ball. Okay, multiplied by the, our angular velocity squared. Now what I realize in, in terms of this is I'm, I'm going to now um, just reorganize this slightly, okay? How I'm going to reorganize this is just, I'm basically going to, it's omega times one half times then each of these. So I'm going to expand on this equation to now look like one half times IA, right, the moment of inertia of the arm, multiplied then by omega squared plus one half, I'm doing a distribution, that's all I'm doing, plus one half times IB times omega squared. Okay, so we have now this term, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to substitute now on in our VT over R. Okay, that we said is equivalent to the angular velocity for both of these angular velocities. So let's see what happens there, okay? So kinetic energy of rotation is equal to one half IA VT over R, that's squared, plus one half IB VT over R squared, uh, over R, that whole thing squared. Okay, 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to expand on this moment of inertia for the, for the ball. We know the moment of inertia for the arm. I mean, they told it to us, right? So it's 0.72. We don't really have to expand on that. Although I can, I'm going to leave it alone. All right. Um, I'm going to, though, expand on this moment of inertia for the ball. Now, you got to remember, going back to the picture over here, you have to remember what's the nature of the shape, right, that's cut out if this ball rotates around the axis, okay? And we would treat the ball to simplify it as a point mass, okay? So it's just a point mass right here rotating about the arm. It would basically cut out a hoop, okay, shape. Right, so it's basically a mass that's at a point here that's rotating about a center axis. So we would use now this moment of inertia formula for it, mr squared. Okay, so that's what now I'm going to substitute on in for this term. Okay, so now we have kinetic energy of rotation will equal one half i a v t over r squared plus one half. Now doing the substitution, it's the mass of the ball, because that's what's rotating, multiplied then by the radius squared. Now remember, the radius is just the distance from the axis of rotation to where that mass is, right? It's just this distance. Now in terms of that distance, it's the same as the 0.6, right? So it's the same as the radius of the problem. Okay, so this is then r squared. Now times vt, I know I'm running out of space, over r, and this whole thing, whoops, this whole thing squared. Now notice something. What happens if I distribute essentially the square to both the velocity and the radius? What happens to then the radius squared here and the radius that would be squared here? They would cancel. They would cancel. Okay. Since they're going to cancel, I'm left now with this formula. Kinetic energy of rotation is equal to one half I A V T over R squared plus one half mb vt squared omg shut the front door look at this formula and compare it to what we just came up with before over here now remember all i did was i only am taking into account the total kinetic energy of rotation which is equivalent to the work of rotation, which I had before. I erased the equation on the top here. It used to, this is not the equation. It was WR is equal to um, uh, KER plus the K of the ball, right? The translational. But notice that these two things are the same. Okay, the numerator, the numerator value here is the same as the numerator value in here. So it doesn't matter how you frame the problem. Kind of interesting, right? Okay. So the numerator formula is exactly identical. So you can look at this in a bunch of ways. I like to do that for you guys so you see how these formulas work. Okay, that's how you learn. Now, let me just plug in now all the values that I have and we'll calculate, all right? So, okay, so I'm gonna, so one half times the moment of inertia of the arm is 0.72 times then the velocity, the tangential velocity, which is 38, 0.6111 divided by then our radius of 0.6, that whole thing squared. Plus then one half times the mass of the ball, which is 0.156, times then the tangential velocity of 38.6111 squared. So I get a basically a total work done of about 1,607. Okay. From here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that value and divide it now by the perpendicular lever arm. Okay, I'm using this formula down here, guys. Whoops. I'm using, this is the formula to find the force, okay? And I'm going to divide that now by the perpendicular lever arm of 0.04, then multiply that now by my theta, which I said is a quarter of a circle, so multiply that by pi over 2. And what do we get? Voila. We get a value now for the force. So the force that the, um, the muscles exerted will be equal to 2.56. 2 2.56 times 10 raised to the... What's that? One, two, three, four times 10 to the fourth. And that is in terms of Newtons. Okay. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the answer. Hope that made sense for you guys. All right. A little longer, but, you know, I'm trying to, I'm definitely trying to get points across, see how formulas interconnect, see how you can think about these in different ways. And the more ways you see problems approached, the more likely you are to uh, be able to solve them correctly. Okay.
So thank you again. Please remember to subscribe. Help us out. Just hit that like button. All right. We'd like to keep producing content for you guys. And uh, a very motivational way to do that is to is to definitely see our subscriber count go up and the views and so on and so forth. All right. So appreciate it very much. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day.